I'm here with Chris Britt, the CEO and founder of Chime. This is Chime's fourth year on the list, and a year when the number of fintechs on the list has dropped. Talk to us about what makes Chime so different from some of these fintechs, including past disruptors that have gone public, companies such as Dave, and they have seen their stocks plummet. Thanks so much, Julia. It's great to make the list, and uh, we made it. We're not even an AI company. Go figure. <laughs> um, it's a great honor, and... Um, you know, I think Chime's different than a lot of other companies in that uh, the way that we go to market is with a very aligned uh, consumer business model. So we're not a bank. We're a consumer fintech, and we help consumers manage their everyday money. They use us uh, as really a primary bank account, which is a real differentiation versus a lot of other companies that may help a consumer with a one-off transaction, a P2P. Uh, Chime members use us as the primary everyday account. They get direct deposit into the account, which goes into our two FDIC-insured banks, and they use it and love us uh, for their everyday transactions. We uh, are the most loved uh, banking app, and we're consistently in the top handful of uh, top downloaded banking apps. Now, the whole banking system has really been on edge since the implosion of Silicon Valley Bank. There was a Gallup poll out last week that found that about half of Americans are worried that the money they have in banks is not safe. Is that good for Chime? Is that bad? Have you seen an impact post-SVB? Well, even before SVB, the trust levels that mainstream Americans have in banks is extremely low. And I think that was part of the opportunity that we pursued when Ryan and I started the company, uh, you know, over 10 years ago now. Um, you know, we haven't seen much of a change as a result of the SVB uh, situation. We, we, are, uh, we had a relationship with SVB. We, st we still do. Um, and we think highly of the, the people and uh, really feel for the people that were affected um, by that. But in terms of our consumer base, you know, 99.9 percent of our consumer deposits are FDIC insured because they're well below the $250,000 threshold. And that is also really good and productive for our two bank partners because it allows them to have, um, you know, really strong um, stability in terms of uh, the deposit base that, that they enjoy and they use to run their business. So, you know, the, one of the elements of Chime that makes us unique, I think, is that not only are we a great um, benefit to consumers who are avoiding fees, getting access to their money early, avoiding overdrafts and stuff, but at the same time, we're also helping small and mid-sized banks that are having a, a very difficult time competing with the large banks who continue to get larger. And I think just the last month has only, you know, further emphasized that. Yeah, you, you mentioned earlier you're not an AI company, but you are investing increasingly in AI and in a chatbot. How will AI impact your business going forward? I mean, AI is going to uh, affect every company, and certainly as a technology company, we're embracing it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're a human-first company, so we have 24-7 customer service and, um, you know, try to always be super responsive to our members. But AI is already helping us a lot uh, in terms of making our agents more um, effective in diagnosing what problems consumers might have. Um, our engineers use it, um, generative AI, to help them assist them with their coding process. We use it certainly in our risk and scoring models, but ultimately, you know, we need humans involved to make uh, the, the final decisions because it is a, um, you know, it's a regulated industry and we need to make sure that we're playing by all the rules.